Okay, in this video I'm going to quickly go over how to implement work sharing on a certain file, um, what it does, and then um, we'll type a couple loose ends that will help you get through the first part of the Revit project. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is open up the um, base model for the Revit project that I give you guys on Blackboard. So this model, if you look through it quickly, I'm not going to go over it too much. Uh, but you can see that it's a two-story school building entrance over here. You got your first floor of classrooms here, your second floor of classrooms here, um, and you can see the floor plans associated. You got a basement floor plan, a level one floor plan with stairs going up there, stairs going up there, level one point five floor plan. All this is is just the levels of these two landings for these staircases, and then level two floor plan, which is just more classrooms, more bathrooms, etc. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to enable what's called work sharing. And what work sharing will allow us to do, uh, one, it'll allow us to create, um, what are these called? Uh, work sets, thank you. <laughs> it allows us to create work sets uh, that allow us to organize our uh, model much better. So we can, you know, for instance, put columns into the column work set. You can put plumbing fixtures into the plumbing fixture work set. And it helps you quickly and easily. Um, organize and show things that you want to show, not show things that you want to, don't want to show, and so on. Uh, so to enable it, we'll go down here and we'll just click this Work Sets button. And so auto, uh, Revit will automatically give you this thing that says you're about to enable work sharing. Um, it'll just let you know a few things there. Uh, but the, the important thing with this dialog box is it's asking what do you want to move all your levels and grids to? So everything like all of the grids, that you see here, all the levels and your elevations, those are all going to move to a work set called Shared Levels and Grids. And then the remaining work sets <clears throat> will move to this work set that we deem, um, by default it just gives it work set one. We want to call it uh, the architecture work set. So since we call it architecture, that means that everything else besides grids and levels will move into this architecture work set. Not necessarily everything that we have in this model needs to go to the architecture work set though, so we might have to come back after the fact and change some things to other work sets. Okay, so once we hit OK, it'll take a little bit of time, but then it'll bring up this work sets dialog box, and we can just go through and add all the work sets we need. I'm not going to add them all, I'm just going to add one here called plumbing fixtures. Again, you guys can go through and add each one that you see on the homework just make sure they're visible in all views currently. Okay, we'll hit OK. Uh, the reason I brought plumbing fixtures over is I'm going to hit OK one more time and yeah, I'll say I want to make plumbing fixtures the active work set. What I want to do is I want to switch these like the toilets and the sinks over to the plumbing fixture work set. That's the only thing that's not architectural that came into uh, our project. So we'll just go through here and we'll grab these toilets and sinks, change them over. In the properties here you see that they're called, they're in the work set of architecture. If we hit this drop down, we'll see all of our different work sets we have to choose from and we can put them into the plumbing fixtures work set. Let's go to floor one, do the same thing with these plumbing fixtures here. So we'll select all the plumbing fixtures. We'll come over to work set, hit drop down there, choose plumbing fixtures. Okay, so that is enabling work sharing. There's a few little tricks now that we have to do to make sure that uh, Revit understands how uh, how our saving process works. And so what, what we did with work sharing is not only did we bring in these uh, work sets that we can use, it also makes it now so that this uh, this project can be shared between multiple people at once. And so how that's done is there's a central file that's created. And the central file is kind of the master file. Um, it's the file that gets updated every time somebody's working on something. Then um, users can check out what's called a local file from the central file. This local file, they'll be allowed to check out certain work sets so let's say I was working on you know, columns, I could check out the column work set and start working on it locally. That would lock everybody else out from working on columns, but somebody else could come in and they could work on you know, plumbing or they could work on 
architecture. They could work on just another portion of the building if it's a different work set. And so this allows you to have five, ten people working on the same model at once. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to save this central file first. So we'll hit the Revit drop down here. We'll go to Save As Project. And now we just want to find a place that we want to save it. I'm just going to go ahead um, and go to my E. Go to there. And I'm just going to save the project here. So, of course, Project Spring 2015. And I'm just going to be saving over it, but that's okay. Um, oops, sorry, one thing before. So let's go back and do that one more time. I'm sorry. Let's hit the drop down, save as project. Again, I'm going to go to. Okay. Uh, go to the options before you before you save this. You want to click options, and you don't necessarily need to do this. It's just a good thing to check to make sure that it's it's saving correctly. So once we save it, you should have a grayed out check mark box that is checked that says make this a central model. Since we haven't made a central model yet, Revit's going to require us to make this a central model. Uh, everything else though you can just leave as is. So then you can go ahead and go save, override it if you need to. Okay, so we have, uh, we have our project now. We've saved it as a central. Now you can see up here that's no longer going to allow us to save again, and that's because we're in the central model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my Revit drop down, go to Save As again, Project, and now I'm just going to append local on it. So we're now saving this as a local file, um, but just typing local into the name doesn't actually do it. Let's go to Options to make sure we're saving a local file. So Revit's pretty smart and understands we just saved a central model. We probably don't want to just resave another central model. Probably now that we're going through the save process again, we're trying to create a, a, a local. So now you can see that this checkmark box is now made available to us, and it's unchecked. If we checked it, this new pro this new file that we're saving now becomes the central model. But since it's unchecked, this is just going to be a local file based on that central model. So we'll hit OK. We'll rename it to something else besides exactly that. We don't want to override it. So I just put local at the end of it. I'll hit save. Okay, and there we go. So now we've created a local file that is based on that central. So what I can do is I can go through, I can make changes to this local file, and then if I want those changes to appear in my central file, I have to go to the Collaborate tab right here, and I want to click Synchronize with Central. If we click Synchronize with Central, this dialog box will come up. It'll show you the location of your central model, so if you read through it, you should see the exact file path of your central model. Uh, if it's not showing the correct one, you can hit browse, but if you go through the process that we just did, it should. Uh, and then just make sure this checkmark box is checked, because all that's going to do is it's going to say to save a local file before and after syncing. And the reason it does that is sometimes when you sync uh, with Revit, it'll crash, and so it's just going to save that local file before you sync it, and then after you sync it. So I just hit OK there. Okay, cool. So now we've synced it up, and that's that's pretty much it. So on the submittals that I will have you guys do, those project submittals throughout the rest of the semester, I want you guys always turning in the central file. So the central file is not the one you're working in. It's it's This is the local again. The central one is the one you saved first, the one you always go back to. Okay, um, so now whenever you want to work on Revit, just make sure that these were saved in a, a place that you can find them easily. And so anytime you want to work in Revit, make sure you're always opening your local, working in your local, then hitting synchronize with central, and that'll put you that'll save it back into the central model. You don't want to work in the central itself. Okay, so now that we've done all that, uh, the only other thing to go over really is uh, making our sheets. And so when you're making your sheets, I want all of these different views on these sheets, but you'll notice I asked for things like floor plan level one, west and east. And the reason for that is, is this building is very long and skinny, and so it doesn't fit on our sheets very well. Uh, it would fit on our sheet, but then we'd have a ton of white space up here and a ton of white space down here. Um, so what I've asked you guys to do is cut these views in half. I want to cut them right down the middle so that we can put 
uh, just the west view on one sheet and then the, the, the east view on another sheet. And the way we do that is if you come over to your project browser here, you see we have our floor plan level one. If we right click floor plan level one, we can go down to duplicate view right here. And there's three options for duplicating. One, we can duplicate it, just straight up duplicate it. Uh, one, we can duplicate with detailing. And what that'll do is not only duplicate the view, but also make it so that we have uh, the annotations and everything come over as well. Uh, the last one is duplicate as a dependent. And that's what we want to do for this. Uh, what duplicate as a dependent does is it makes it so now we have another floor plan that depends upon this one. So this floor plan will have the same scale as floor plan level one. It'll have the same annotations. It'll have everything the same. But what this allows us to do is now make this floor plan have a different view than our floor plan level one. So I'm going to go and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to rename it level one west. Okay, I'm going to drag that out a little bit. So you can see we have floor plan level one west. Now if we click uh, our, our scope box here, this shows us what we want to view. So I can take this and I can drag my scope box. I'm going to drag it all the way over just to the right side of grid mark five. And then I'm just going to tighten it up here a little bit. Okay, so once I've done that, um, you can see what this looks like now. I personally don't like to see the scope box. Some people do, but it's just a personal preference. So I'm going to turn my scope box off, actually. And to do that, you can go into the properties of your floor plan here. If you scroll down, you'll see there's uh, a crop view. We want to make sure that still is checked because we are cropping our view. I just don't want the crop region visible. So I'm going to uncheck that. And that just makes it so that uh, that box goes away. Okay, so I'm going to make one more dependent view. Again, we're going to go back to level one, floor plan level one. Make another dependent view of floor plan level one. I even want to rename this one east now. And then we'll take our scope box and we'll drag it all the way over to grid line five there. And again, tighten it up a little bit. Um, and then go back over here to our properties and uncheck crop region visible. Okay. Um, another thing that there were a lot of questions about in class is for your basement floor plan, for example, you obviously don't want all these grids over here and everything. Uh, remember, in, uh, in Revit, we never want to delete anything. Instead, we want to hide things or move things around. Um, so instead of trying to, to mess with it, we're instead just going to go down to the properties, and we're just going to crop this view as well. So we can crop our basement view, have that crop region visible so we can see it, and then all we have to do is just take this crop box and drag it in, and tighten it up a little bit. And so that'll make it so we just see our basement. Again, you don't want to go through and delete grids. You don't want to take these grids and drag them in because that'll change it for all your views. Instead, what you want to do is crop this region. And then once you're done, you can uncheck the crop region visible and that's what it'll look like. Okay, and then other than that, all you have to do is just load in that sheet family that I gave you guys on Blackboard and then just start throwing all of these different views onto those sheets and that'll do it for homework assignment one. Again, remember, whenever you're done working on something, make sure you're in the local file, hit synchronize with central, make sure it's going to your central file, save the local, hit okay, and you're done.